What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode of Ludus, I am doing a video on my grinding lineup. It's taken me a hot second to get here, but I got here. And the main reason why it's taken me a hot second is I've been waiting for Brewmaster to get to level 13 for a while now. And this is really a story about how this game is just hilarious in every possible sense of the word. So the Astral event just ended this morning. This entire week, I have been grinding for a ch Astral chest over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. To the point I actually got multiple perks to rare and epic that I really probably wouldn't have been. I definitely wouldn't have been able to if I hadn't grinded out the perks or the chests. But the reason why I was grinding them is I was looking for one copy of Brewmaster. I just needed one the entire week. He only needed one more copy to get to level 13. So I was grinding left, right and center trying to get him. I'm getting legendaries left, right and center. No Brewmasters and this morning. When it ended, I was number one in compasses and number one on spheres for leader for my area's leaderboard. And I got 40 pulls. Yeah, yeah, I got 40 ethereal summon pulls. So I went and screw it. I'm going to go for Mako. Why? Because Mako only needs two more copies to get to level 12. Once he gets to level 12, I can take Bulwark up to legendary and I'll be fine. Oddly enough, I got Brewmaster. Follow or on the poll, I was supposed to get Mako. I got Brewmaster. Following that pull into a regular 10 pull, I got a copy of Pirate Queen. I can't be upset with that. But that's just how funny this game is. All week I was trying so hard to get there. All of that work paid off with my one copy of Brewmaster to level 13. So I made a deck around it. Now, you've seen this shell a couple of times already. Tony, Marta, Griffin. Tony is my strongest, most comfortable, or the tank I am the most comfortable with. He's not necessarily the strongest, but he kind of is to a certain extent. But he's the one I'm most comfortable with right now. Muerta is my bread and butter for everything, and so is Griffin. Being at League 9 now, I have to have at least three of my strongest cards. So that'll be Griffin, Muerta, and Tony. But to come on top of that, I have thrown on Firestarter, with Brewmaster. Now, I know you're looking at this going, well, Jeff, there's no real synergy here. What is the purpose of this? The purpose lies within the perks. So, Tony. Tony has Lightning Reactor and Deadly Swamp. Deadly Swamp poisons enemies in the center and it triggers after the 15 seconds for each round. So each round, every 15 seconds, it'll trigger. It goes off the initial. Goes off 15 seconds later, and if the fight's still going, it'll go off one more time. That is going to complement our Brewmaster. Brewmaster throws a barrel that poisons enemies in an area for 5 seconds, dealing 803,000 damage and applying the bad aim curse. Attacking, the enemies will have 80% chance to miss. The branch off of that is attacking a poison target. Brewmaster has a 30% chance to apply bad aim curse. 30% chance is not a whole heck of a lot of a chance. It's considering his attack speed is at 1.3 seconds. So, to remedy that, I threw on Lightning Reflexes. He's now going to have a 108% increased attack speed, so he's going to be chuck, chuck, chucking, and then barrel. Chuck, 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 barrel. Chuck, 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 barrel. We're going to be spreading out the poison and the love. But while they're in the poison of our deadly swamp, Brewmaster has a chance to apply that bad aim curse. To complement that, we're also going to be doing Eldritch Horror at the start of each round. We're going to cast three seconds of fear on enemies in its line. Enemies debuffed by Eldritch Horrors, or Eldritch Horrors Fear effect take 143.6% of heroes damage per second. When fear wears off, it's going to apply a two-second stun. So, hopes and dreams here. Tony lays out the swamp. Brewmaster hits them with the Eldritch Horror. They go and start to wander. Maybe they wind up in the swamp. They stun themselves in the swamp. Brewmaster is hitting them left, right, and center, applying the bad aim curse, cutting down Kitsunades, Griffins, Tech Golems, any other uh, Tonys, Pirate Queen, basically anything in the front row that's going to go right in that swamp. That's where Brewmaster's bread and butter lies. Firestarter is going to have Shark Tornado, Shield of Faith, and Ray of Light. 
I don't like Ray of Light. I really want another Circle Perk. I don't like Ray of Light. Cannot stress that enough. As start of each round, allies immediately flanking the hero gain regeneration for 10 seconds, recovering 8.2% of, of HP. Cool. I don't like it. I just don't. It's not a high enough percent of HP for me. I just don't like it. But it'll fit. It's better than having a blank spot. Shield of Faith. Let's talk about it. So, I underestimated Shield of Faith. When I first saw it, I thought it was garbage. Why? Because it uses, or by using an energy costing ability, we're going to cast his 10 second shield on self equal to 30.7% of the hero's HP. As you level it up, it gets better. At level 20, when destroyed, the shield explodes, dealing 75% of hero's damage to nearby enemies. At level 60, when destroyed, the shield stuns nearby enemies for two seconds. At level 100, once per round, after suffering a lethal blow while buffed by Shield of Faith, the hero survives and gains a regular shield equal to 40% of their max HP. Looking at this, I would still think it's hot garbage. Outside of the two seconds done. One of the games I played leading up to this recording, I faced a tech golem that had a level 79 shield of faith and a level 100 tech golem armor plating. The amount of bullshit I experienced in that fight was redonkulous. I cleared all of their cards, aside from tech golem. Tech Golem gets right up on the opponent, such as Muerta, for instance, popping out her skeletons. He activates his ability, which activates Shield of Faith, so he is deflecting all the damage back to the skeletons, wiping out the skeletons. The shield breaks, stuns Muerta. Muerta's just left there getting hit. She pops out another crypt. Skeletons go bye-bye. Muerta dies. It was literally punching a brick wall that was fighting back. It was stupid. But it's something I'm going to be working towards because it was a lot of fun. So Shield of Faith is actually going to go up to level 60 here soon. But it is a perk I am recommending after level 60. Level 60 and up is when it's viable. Level 59 and down. Take it or leave it. It's really only on here because Griffin has the our armor plating. Muerta has the bulwark. Tony has the reactor. And Panda has Scorched Earth. So it's going on a fire starter because not or having a perk there is better than no perk at all. Whew. Continuing on, Muerta is going to have our normal lineup or normal perk lineup, Landmine, Bulwark, and Hocus Pocus. Griffin is going to have Onslaught, Armor Plating, and Daydreams. Daydreams at level 60 increases the chance to apply weakness to 40%. I'm looking forward to getting it to level 100, but the fact that Snoozemander will probably never get to level 15 and the amount of time that this perk is relevant on my end. I hope it one day it'll get there. By level 100, weakness is also applied to enemies in a small area around the target. That'd be really good. It just doesn't fit right now. And that's okay. So this is our lineup. We have Iron Tony, Firestarter, Brewmaster, Muerta, and Griffin. Let's get into our three fights. See if I can still get or still have some luck. All right, Mr. Meow. Meow? I'm going to call you Mr. Meow because I think that's what you went for is Mr. Meow. So in your lineup, I need to worry about the Pirate Queen, Kitsune, and Gollum. Okay, that should be fun. Whew. I'm hoping everybody else's week has gone well with the Astral event. I hope you all found some pieces that you were missing stumbled upon some pieces that you didn't know you needed it worked out very well for me and i'm gonna miss it uh, until the next one hits i'm i eagerly await that day so one thing i'm going into into mindset wise is in the first couple of rounds i really kind of i really want to aim for coins as best as i possibly can devs if any of you are watching this please get the laughing perk off of the bots thank you have a good day <clears throat> but I generally tend to aim for coins, getting the most bodies on the field. One thing I have noticed, and I, I got, I, I'm got, i doing kind of a retraction here based off of one of my comments that I made in one of my previous videos. I said before that levels don't matter or they don't hold as much value 
anymore. And I still kind of stick by that statement of their value. But I have figured out the strategy with N Ludus. If you are able to have your level 50, or basically how, how it rocks out, the first two rounds are level-based, card level-based. The first two rounds are. The higher your level of cards are, the higher chance you have of winning the first two rounds, and you're golden. After the second round, it's perks. So having your perks at Legendary, where they go off at Prowess 10, so on and so forth, those are going to benefit you the most. And that's where that goes into play. In the late game, it is a combination of your might percentage and your perk levels. That's where it matters. So I'm sure beyond, not really beyond a shadow of a doubt, but I'm very, very positive that the card levels matter with that one in regards to your damage output and so forth or so on and so forth we're gonna sack these two tonys because i don't need them right now i already have a super and we're gonna super out our panda next turn will be fire starter but ultimately it breaks out the first two rounds in my eyes in my mind and the way things that work up here in my mind i should not have put that panda there i just realized the landmine i was too busy talking and forgot about the landmine that's my fault. That's my fault big time. I, I should have known better. But we got to veer into this skid as it is. But as I was saying, rounds one and two are generally focused around card levels as perks aren't active at that time. On turns three, four, and five, depending on how the match is going, you're going to lean into your perks, getting all your perks active, trying to at least, and then kind of going from there. I'm going to put, oh, you have bolt, you have Scorched Earth, don't you? I didn't really look. Square, 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 square. It's only Gollum. You do not have Scorched Earth. We're going to bring our Griffin all the way the heck back here. I don't like it, but we need to pivot away from that landmine. Um, Where was I going with this? Rounds two, three, ones, one, two, possibly three are card levels. Three, four, five are perks. Anything past that is might, percentage, perk, unlocks, and levels. It, it all comes into a beautiful cocktail at the end there. I don't like any of this. I don't like how any of this went. I'm going to hold. I, have, I don't like any of this. I don't really feel like sacking anything because really nothing is going to come out of this for me. So we're just going to kind of go. I mean, I'm already destroying their lineup already with landmine, so I'm not too concerned. Yeah, we're good. We won. That was that was pretty solid, actually. Making that play to shift everything to the left worked out splendidly. I cannot be upset with that. Three red perks was still able to overcome. That said, the main reason we were able to overcome is three supers to five. I don't think he got the Pirate Queen out quickly enough. Kitsune came in way too late, was too far back, and Monkey King 12 and below is garbage. Yep, that's my thoughts. Let's go into fight number two. All right, fight number two is against Marquito. Almost the same lineup. Almost. Go in, hit it good. He's basically probably going to take me the first couple of rounds, depending. Because of the card levels, because of the fact he was able to merge out a little bit, he's got us on the first couple of rounds. Hopefully we can get our landmine out faster. We're going to add 10 battle prowess to a rando, which is going to fall on Griffin, which is fine. Griffin over here in the corner is not going to be an issue. Let's see here. How do I want to play this? Let's go here. Okay, so now we have ourselves set up. Let's go here, here here we don't have a reason to now we do i was about to say we don't have a reason to merge the muerta yet but now we do we're gonna get the griffin out there tier three is gonna do a lot better than tier twos or a tier two and a tier one because of the ability trigger so that'll win us out so that's good um we need really need muerta right here in this center spot so if we can get there that would be great. We're going to keep that spot cleared. I'm not uh, I'm just going to get landmine active. Just get landmine active. Leave it like this. 
six empty spots allows for me to take my L like I need to. And yeah, we really need Muerta in the center and then everything else to the sides. Because he's putting, it looks like he's putting his Lava Girl right here in the center as well. Three rock breaks. Let's go for bodies. That nine would have fallen on Tony or Panda. We have Muerta right where we want Muerta, so that's freaking glorious. Spring. Okay, we got Tonys. Let's start working the Tonys real quick. We got three more summons. Perfect. Let's go this here. Bring this down here. Bring this over here. Bring that to there. This to here. This to here. Let's check you real quick. Gollum is the only one with squares that are occupied. So we have no, no scorched earth. So we're going to bring Panda all the way the heck back here. If we can move him forward, great. If not, I'm not going to cry about it. Bring Gollum, or Tony over here. That's the best we can do there. We really need to get a new position for Firestarter. We need another position. We need to get him away from that landmine. Now, I'm assuming this is a bot just by how they've merged and stuff like that. I'm going to assume it's a bot. Bots generally tend to stick to the same patterns as where their tier threes land. That's generally where they're going to keep their supers. But this might change. We're going to watch. I think I made a mistake moving the Tony over already. Yep, I made the mistake of moving Tony over already. However, that does allow us to have everything to the left. So moving Tony over kind of hurt a little bit, but not nearly enough to really, I think, cost us this match. So we are gonna we are gonna keep Firestarter right around here. We are gonna get the shield. We did not get another copy of. To, or of a uh, fire starter so we're just gonna start dropping panda we're gonna drop panda we're gonna drop tony there is our fire starter get him up and ready to go this muerta might wind up staying right here but we're gonna see how this goes we're doing relatively well we're wiping out their big problem or the big problem dealers right now and really just having to focus golem which is great pivoting out was a good idea we're just getting pandas left, right, and center. Panda knows this video has been about him this whole time. He wants to see the limelight. So we're going to bring this Muerta over here to let the landmine kind of go and do its thing in this general area for right now. And then hopefully we either win or we lose and go into the next one. And it looks like we might be going in. Nope, we're not. We're fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, Firestarter is just going to deal as much damage to... Golem as humanly possible. Muerta's come back to life. That stun is going to play problems here. But we've got this. Muerta coming back to life is a big thing. No! Yes, we won. We went off of bodies. Good job. Good job. But now we see what I was talking about with Shield of Faith. It locked us both in. He got in right in between Firestarter and Muerta. The second it popped, it stunned. That That is the reason why this combination works so well on Tech Golem. If you really, truly want to be an ass, and I say this with the fullest belief in my system, with Tech Golem at level 15, if you went Shield of Faith, Armor Plating, and Bulwark, Golem is one of the hardest things to drop. So, keeping that in mind, his freaking health is 10 million. That's redonkulous. All right, fight number three. I love this fight. That was a great fight. Let's go into fight number three. See if we can repeat that. All right. We're going up against September. Looks like Tech Golem and uh, Griffin are the two main things we need to focus on. Oh, no. There we go. Hit the wrong button. Okay. So, yeah, Muerta is going to be kind of a chore, but nothing drastic. Griffin is really going to be our strongest opponent. So, we're going to go with the Nine Prowess. It didn't hit what I wanted, but we'll take what we can get. We're going to start moving Griffin over here. 
Muerta being right there is not exactly a problem. It's not ideal, but it's not a problem. We're going to stop emerging right here. We're just going to go with bodies. I want to take a couple of L's right now if I can. If I win, great. I'm mainly aiming for the L. There's that. His reach. Oh, my God. Onslaught at max level is such a pain in the ass. Okay, we're still not drawing what we need to draw into that space right there. And it's becoming a dead space. And I'm not... There it is. All right, finally. So I go in with every single fight with one particular game plan. That is anything, any card that I have that has um, landmine in it needs to go in the center somewhere. So now we split up the landmine. That should cause a little bit of a commotion. There we go. Commotion has been established. That griffin is coming back to life all the time and needs to stop. Oh, this is going to be, this is going to be tough. This is going to be a tough fight. It's going to be a very tough fight. We're going to go with the Battle Prowess again. All right. You want to play these fucking games? I'll play these games with you, boy. I'll play. I'll play all day. All day. Okay. Where's that landmine at? Landmine is level 99 on that side. So we can go and focus to the right. I kind of messed up with the Griffin right there. I didn't really, I wasn't really paying too close of attention there, and I should have. But we're fine. We should be able to take at least another two hearts from him in this process. Let's hope. Let's hope and dream. All right, we've got Tony going over here. we got Griffin going here. we got Muerta going right there to break that rock, giving us another body. Let's bring Panda over here, see if we can get another body. Perfect. Call it. Really just wanting that Kitsune to fall. Kitsune has fallen. We're good. We just need to stay ahead. That's all it is. We just need to stay ahead of that fucking griffin. But as in all things, time is not on our side. Okay, that's going there. Tony here. We got three more summons. I don't want to dead space this, but I need the body out. I need the super right now. So I'm going to move Panda all the way over here. He did shift the Muerta to the back line. So that's a little disconcerting, but nothing we can't overcome. There we go. Should pan out relatively well. Not 100% sure, but... We got those barrels going. We got just Panda is just wailing just wailing look at him go good job oh we took down the griffin now we are level we are even on hearts Let's see if we can get another tony no tony so how i'm gonna do this is i'm gonna level up her or prowess and then i'm gonna drop the panda there is another muerta there is our landmine again let's get another landmine in there let's we got to stall. I got no other reason to drop anything. Everything's leaning in my direction right now. Luckily, our Griffin is putting in the work. Got him. This is phenomenal. This lineup is working out really well. We're going to go with attack speed instead of adding nine battle prowess. The battle prowess would go to Firestarter, which could pay out... The attack speed just seems too good, but also the health regen. Let's go. Let's go with attack speed. Go with your gut feeling. Go with the gut instinct. Stick with the gut instinct. Okay, so we're going to go here, 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 and here. We're going to drop Firestarter and Tony. We got our Griffin, so there's our other, there's our second Griffin. This is locked now. We should be fine. Should be fine. Now famous last words you know what i mean we're golden we took him we're good heck yeah that was beautiful took ourselves away from the landmine got ourselves in a great positioning across the board going wide instead of consolidating down that took them out that was wonderful oh absolutely wonderful 130 million damage from us to their 88 we had one extra super base we spent more coin 
That was fantastic. <sighs> Needless to say, from these three fights, you can see why this lineup is now my grinding lineup. I will be climbing the ladder. My goal is to be top 100 and top 50 at the end of every single season. Every single one, I need to be top 100 or top 50, and that's what the aim is. That's what the goal is. That's what's going to be accomplished. So if you guys are enjoying this content, please like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about me. We were getting so close to 200 subscribers, something I never thought I would say. And I'd love to see the day that we get there and higher. The main goal for this channel right now, hold on one second. <coughs> main goal for this channel right now is to get to the height where we're I can live stream and make these videos on a day to day basis and bring more and more enjoyment to people if I can. And I'm going to. So those are the goals. Those are the dreams. So I'm going to leave you the same way I always do. Life can be fun. You allow it to be. See you next time.